almost a minute away from 2017. The triangles on the ball this year represent the gift of kindness. You can feel the energy. They're amping up here in Times Square. We have got one minute. Are we ready? Yes, they have been waiting all day long. Almost two million people, NYPD tells me, and 20 seconds. Here we go. 2018. We wanted to end 2017 off with um, one of our favorite white boys on the podcast. So, seeing H, appreciate you joining us um, for the Best Friend Weekend. It's the top 10 episode of 2017. Raj, how you feel about that? I'm feeling great, man. This is uh, takes me back. Memories. So, uh, this is actually our first ever podcast, top, top 10 of 2016, you know? So, I'm feeling great. Why did you... Why did you say 2016 and I said 2016? I don't know which one is right and which one mm. is wrong. Let me, this is a great story. Um, I mean, I'm at, I No, seriously, at some point in my life, I decided to start referring to things as they are. So, um, <laughs> 2016 is two numbers, right? It's 20 and 16. If you put yeah. them together, it's 2016. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, but one thing I will say that may put it into perspective for you is that my cell phone number has two zeros in it and some people say O oh, and I don't say O oh no yeah. more. I say zero. I stopped talking I say, to you um, if you say O oh when it's a zero. It's zero. Well I say zero I say zero as well, but I have a I have a, a poignant question for you, right? What you got? Um what year were you born? You, you may you may you was gonna make me say eighty six. <laughs> no no what year were you born? What year were you born? Uh, I, I, Nineteen thousand and eighty-six. <laughs> no, you no, 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 indeed. You were not born in nineteen thousand. Nineteen hundred eighty-six. Nineteen thousand. You were born in actually, I'm future, baby. You were not born in nineteen hundred eighty-six. Nineteen. You were born in nineteen eighty-six. So it is twenty seventeen. Al wins. Ding. This podcast is brought to you by. <laughs> did you just who think fabricate on their feet. the ding? <laughs> I did because this podcast is brought to you by people who think on their feet. Very nicely, like I just did. Hey, can I tell you something that happened to me today, real quick? I um, I'm cleaning up around the house. I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff because I'm off work for a little while. And I brought some old TVs to the Salvation Army, and I opened the door, and the dude was like, "Nah, we're not taking that TV." <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? It, he was like, "Nah, we only take flat screens." <laughs> The motherfucker told me at the Salvation Army, we only take flat screens. Well, homeless people don't watch box wild? TVs. I mean, okay, I get it. Like, what do you do with a box TV? Why do I even still have a box TV? But still, take it. There's got to be some poor motherfucker who needs a box TV, right? You could put that in your uh, in your drawer that we always talk about. <laughs> your special drawer. I don't want to, you know, that would be nice to mention anyone's mom. But in that drawer... <laughs> I can put a box TV in there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she has one in there. How does the Salvation Army <laughs> turn anything down? That that is that was my thought. I'm like, dude, I cursed at the dude, but then I felt bad after I left. I brought it to this other place that like you can donate electronics, but I felt bad about that because they were in there like refurbishing stuff and then selling it out the front. So you like donating it, and then they they just doing their work with it. So it was crazy. But Raj, I feel the same way about you, man. This is like um. 
It brings a tear to my eye. I remember sitting in Denver the first time we recorded our first podcast. It was the top 10 of 2017. I want to tell you something interesting. This is actually our 31st podcast. So if this is your first time listening, you can listen to the Best Friend Weekend podcast every day through the month of January. And you will have a new podcast every day in January. This is our 31st, 31st time out the gates. I love it. Yeah, I think outside, I of, the, outside of the the fact that we did a top 10 of 2016 and uh, the top 10 of 2017, outside of that, it's pretty much wide open. You, you, it's not like anything that would be outdated, you know? I think our podcast yeah. is pretty pretty well-rounded, and um, and you can you can find relevant news uh, that would that's almost timeless. Especially, I mean, not timeless per se, but just maybe timeless for a year or so. You can still you can still it's, find value in our podcast in in this year. I feel like yeah, I feel like it's it's a lot better things to come. So we we on the cusp of something great. So let's get into it. Our top ten list of 2017. We've been teasing it for weeks. Um, we're gonna do it a lot the same way that we did it last year. Um, myself, Rice Smooth, and CNH. We all just gonna throw out our. I mean, it's interesting to see who um who who the other. I'm just gonna use air quotes and say the other has in his top sixteen. I meant you, Roger. I didn't mean CNH. I meant you because you you know. Because <laughs> I'm not tall. A little white at heart. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're gonna just hop in and we're gonna say some names, some 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 people, some things that were top ten in 2017. And since Roger said he has no honorable mentions. I'll just start with my four honorable mentions because I, I'm pretty... Sh- I, I'm just going to assume they may not be on your list. So, my four honorable mentions were... Um, the first one I'm coming out the gate with was Salt Bay. I feel like Salt Bay went from no one to relevant in 2017 simply by flipping his wrist, dropping some salt, having a long um, porn um, ponytail in the back. And being Turkish, I and, feel like he made it happen. And and he often would slap his meat. He would slap that meat. Like he knew the the double entendre of slapping, slapping that, that meat, meat and <laughs> punching his clown. He knew what that was all about. Um, to to speak. Another person that I'm gonna throw on my honorable mention list was Jordan Peele from Key and Peele. Um, I don't know. He didn't broach any of y'all list, did he? Uh, yes, sure. No? Yes, he did. Yeah, I mean, he's better than he actually did. Mention. Come on your list. Yeah. Well, shit, I threw it out there. So let's go ahead. You tell me where he fell on your list. He fell on number eight in my list. Number eight. So I'm gonna let you hop on it because you you obviously have a little bit more to say about Jordan. No, Pill. I don't want to hop on it just yet. When we get to my number eight, I'll talk about Jordan Peele. That's how you want to do it. That's how I want to do Can it. Can I? Uh, no, let me, let me let's, add in let's, that no, the only no, white no. guy in the podcast has Jordan Peele higher than both of you. Well, Jordan Peele's kind of uh, loosely black, but go ahead. Where'd you have him at? Oh, <laughs> CNH. Is Tiger Woods black? He. Where'd you have him at? CNH. <laughs> I had him at seven. A reason. You had him at spot. seven. Okay, let's talk about him. I'll go back to my I'll go back to my honorable mentions next. I'm gonna tell you why I have him on there. And I have him on there because, you know, obviously some of the same reasons you did, but I kind of I am I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of the other guy. Like, um, for instance, when UGK came out, it was all about like Pimp C, Pimp C. But then it was like, damn, Bun B is really the better one. When Outkast came out, it was like, oh, it's all about Andre 3000. But there's value in Big Boy if you like, if you look for it. Even with um, Ray Sherman, it's like Sherman. I don't even know how to pronounce their name. But it was all about like the Slim Jimmy. But now Sway Lee is kind of the one who's like on. It was a never bit about more. Slim Jimmy. I think it was about Slim never. Jimmy. <laughs> he had them girls being real crowd teasers <laughs> crowd pleasers no. okay anyway so my point is just that when Key and Peele was on TV um, it was all about Key right Key and whatever his name is the bald headed one like people kind of thought he was the funny guy he's the face of it he he did a couple of the funnier skits and like Jordan Peele kind of was the other guy but I feel like he just came wrecked this year. And you obviously know how I feel about Get Out. So that's 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 my whole... I mean, he was only honorable mention for me. You guys probably have a better take. I'm no, but that's... Take it over. I'm glad you... Okay, so I never brought it to... I never brought it to the Key and Peele perspective, but I'm glad you did. Because from my perspective with Key and Peele, I never saw either one of them as the alpha dog. 
They were both mm. equally as biracial and funny <laughs> as the other. So I never, I never differentiated uh, between the two. It was always like, oh, this episode. Oh, look, this guy is, you know, doing the doing the hump thing at the goal line. And then this guy You is... always defer to the tall dude, man. I don't... I, you I always defer guy. to the tall dude. I disagree. Yeah. Here's, here, here's my thing about Jordan Peele. And at a little deeper level, you got Jordan Peele, key as well, bringing serious issues to light with humor. And I think that's that's why he's more important to me than coming to the forefront but i mean if you can bring anything to light with humor i'm gonna listen to it more than i'm gonna listen to it if you're being real serious i i agree Mm. with that i couldn't have said that better myself so i guess just to speak on it him being my number eight and him being cnh's number uh number seven that's the reason why i chose him to be my number eight i couldn't have said it better myself but i think chase just said everything that i felt about it because Get Out was a great movie, who, and from what who I, is the, who is this chase you're referring to? I have I'm just no curious. idea. I'm, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know, but oftentimes you call me Roger, so whatever, uh, Alan. So, uh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> you know, I, from what I understand, the movie Get Out was like like his. He, you know, I don't know if he directed it or produced it. I'm it. not it's whatever not he did for the movie. He wrote it. He wrote it. So, um, he, he wrote it. made it. He wrote it. Wrote it. Wrote it is an easy way to just idea. defer produce. He wrote the direct. movie. He wrote that shit. So, um, okay, he ahead. made that shit. So, um, <laughs> it was, it was like his depiction of how like white people perceive black people. And it was cool. Like, All you know what I'm saying? Them. Like, it was like, it was cool to me that like he got that main stage to make that movie. But you know what's crazy is, I don't know if you ever heard that song Wale Shades. Like I oftentimes wonder if Oh yeah, yeah. Someone From a light skinned girl to a dark skinned brother. I often that wonder song. if like if he wasn't biracial, <laughs> that song is what I'm talking about. If he wasn't like biracial, if he would have got that if he would have got that podium to make that movie. But well, whatever. I didn't talk I talked about that on Nothing Nice to Say one time about how light skinned people are always like the leaders of black culture. Why it's never a dark skinned person. Like I, I think there is something even rooted within black people where we feel like the lighter skinned, fairer skinned black people are like the leaders. I don't know. I, I can't really put my finger on it, but I get your point though. Yeah. I feel like that's a legit point. That'll actually so, come, I mean, obviously come I, to the forefront in a little while. I hopped to your I hopped to your number eight and your seven. Hopefully I didn't hit any more of y'all. One of my other top tens. I don't know. Maybe it is. My other honorable mention would be Charlemagne the guy. Good. Um, it's not on my list. Charlemagne Charlemagne had a great year. He that book Black, Black Privilege was like everywhere you look. Um, like so, someone had a copy of it and was reading it. He was getting black people out there reading books. I thought that that was awesome. Charlemagne was an honorable mention of mine. Hey, and my last your, honorable before mention. Your fourth one, go ahead. Quick question: Do four honorable mentions make them less honorable individually? Um, I think they're all kind of like number eleven tied, you know, through so, fifteen. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly going in some kind of an order here. It's more for like Salt Bay was like number twenty, and that was just for kind of like shits and giggles. I remember Salt Bay was kind of a thing this year. I actually thought Jordan Peele was could have cracked my top ten. I just had funnier shit to do with my top ten <laughs> okay. than Jordan good, Peele. Good. And um, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, I, he was good, but he's also he does a podcast and he does kind of the same thing we do. I don't want him to be in my top ten. You know, fuck that. Aldo Nice is in my top ten. Raj Smoove is in my goddamn top ten. Um, and anyway, so the fourth top ten, uh, I mean fourth, um, sorry, honorable mention would be Meek Mill. I talked about this a lot this year, how Meek Mill came back to life. He had a shitty end of the year by going to jail. But remember how many times we talked about how Meek Mill was dead? Like, like he had got completely off and finished. Drake finished him. And then all of a sudden, he had dope albums this year. And, I mean, he lost Nicki Minaj, but he came out of the other side of a, of a breakup as being still cool. I was all about Meek Mill's year, and I felt like I wanted to just mention him that, hey, Meek, if you're listening to the BFW podcast locked up, we fucking with you, dog. Like, I like Meek. So that that was my rationale behind the honorable mentions. But, I mean, 
I really want to start with my number 10, and then we can all give our number 10s, but I definitely want to start with my number 10. Can I, because uh, it's, can it's, I bring, it's, to light my, bring to light my honorable mention? Oh, you do have an honorable mention. I didn't know. I thought we didn't. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Keeping with the sanctity of one honorable mention, I uh, I had the solar eclipse. <laughs> solar eclipse. I love how you feel because I have something that's going to kill that later. Go ahead. Did you not like that, though? I love the fact that he went with the solar eclipse. Like, just... It's not a person. No, I love. Th- but if it no, was no. a person, it would be. No, no, mention. we're we're we're, we're on this. We're I on didn't this. Look at it, we're but on other this. people did, but you know. I would. I I like that, I, and I went out and looked at the solar eclipse, so I can. Um, and a, yeah, there is actually a picture on Best Friend Weekend's Instagram with a young lady with a Best Friend Weekend hat looking at the um the solar eclipse. This podcast is brought to you by Sarah in the Florida Keys. We fucking with you. Hey. My number ten. This should be um. Relevant for both of you guys. Um, so my number 10, it was kind of, and I'm going to just say it was a tie between some individuals. These individuals were, <laughs> I know he's laughing because he's like. How many ties? Okay, have, I get right? it. This is like a how bad many, test. Yeah, yeah. How many top 10? Question one, no. A, B, and A, C. C and H, C and H. Just let me set up this joke because it works so eloquently. This, I've worked on this one more than most things, okay? So the tie is between Ben Simmons Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, and Reggie Bush. So Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds both kind of are um, have gotten more votes for the Hall of Fame this year than before. Reggie Bush is retiring a Saint, and Ben Simmons played for LSU. But really, none of that matters. The, really, the reason I picked all of those is because they all were number 25. And the Falcons blew a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl. So oh, my number 10 oh. are Saints fans. This, this will Saints actually be fans. Is, that is awesome. <laughs> do you know who Ch- Saints, Saints Do you know who Chase? Oh, do you know I do know. I do know. Oh, I do know. <laughs> oh, I do know. Oh, I do know. Can you please let us know who your favorite team is, C&H? Hey, and hey, we will address <laughs> the Dirty Birds here shortly. <laughs> the Dirty Birds. <laughs> So, my point is, Saints fans are my number 10. And these are my reasons why the Saints fans are my number 10. Because it was definitely the year of the troll. You're going to hear a lot of people that are on my list are just trolls. And trolls made them happy. Like, you're going to see a lot of that. We in the playoffs. We had people who sat for the anthem. Who, like, when we were kind of going back and forth on, should you sit for the anthem? Should you stand for the anthem? It was like, I was sitting there like, oh, okay. Our guys kind of like on some fuck it. Okay, I like that. We signed Adrian Peterson, which was like a big time free agent signing. Got rid of his ass. We drafted Kamara. Okay, okay. Manti Teo is killing it this week. I got even a joke about Manti Teo. You know what's Manti Teo's favorite Louisiana food? Probably fried catfish. Fried catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Right, catfish, of course. My number ten are Saints fans and trolls in 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 general. There you go. Anybody else want to hop in with their number ten? Because obviously, I'm with, the, Saints I'm with the Saints. I'm with the Saints shits. I, I know Chase is probably feeling those. I know C and H is probably feeling a little uh, a little shitty right now, but it's all good. Yeah, let me, uh, let twenty-eight me. three. I, I want one of those twenty-eight three shirts. Like anytime I watch NFL Network and I see the top ten at like top ten of. Top 10 running backs that never made the Hall of Fame, whatever, I don't know, all that yeah. shit that comes on NFL Network, and I see the dude with the 28-3 t-shirt on, I know it's a new shirt. Yeah. That's how no, I know No, somebody, it's they got dudes with the Reggie Bush jersey now, the Saints, or the Raphael Bush with the 25, and it says the Falcons blue A, and it has the number 25 <laughs> oh, point lead, nah. like... Yeah, yeah, let me, uh, let me switch love... gears from this bullshit conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> my number 10 was Ashley Graham. Ashley Graham. She, she makes a difference. Not really, but I want to make a point to everyone. <laughs> Ashley Graham's beautiful, sexy, incredible. These 350-pound women that use Ashley Graham as a role model, you are not Ashley Graham. <laughs> you are not body positive. You are about to die. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Graham, I love you. I like thicker women. I like muscular women. I don't like heart attack <laughs> inhibiting women. So can we just stop? That's like me saying because I'm 6'2", 6'3", that I'm fucking Calvin Johnson. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's like if I if I said, hey, if I ran a 4'4", I'd be an NFL wide receiver. Well, fuck yeah, but I'm not 4'4". I don't run a 4'4". So these women that use Ashley Graham as a 
picture of themselves and they are 350 pounds, can we just please stop in 2018? Please Google Ashley Grubb. She's bad. I'm Fire. I'm looking at her right now. Fire. I'm I, I'm looking at her right now, and I like how she. I love how she's handling her weight. She is thick. I will. I will. I will agree. I, I think she's thick. I think there's a difference between, a difference between thick and fat. And that's my but whole I point. also think that if Ash, if we saw Ashley Graham in person, she's fat. <laughs> I would like her to lose a couple pounds. Let's don't forget like, this. You're like, always no, 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 no. fatter in person. As a, than you're a, on a, the no, absolutely. She might not be like healthy as you're making her to be. But these morbidly <laughs> obese women that are body positive, no, you are not. You're you body gotta, negative. You got to start somewhere. That's my rant. I that's guess my if, rant if, for the day. If, you, if your bar is <laughs> Ashley Graham then, and you're 350 pounds, then that's less than if your bar was um, Nicole Richie. So, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I get, I get, <laughs> I get it. Uh, hey, <laughs> Ashley Graham, fuck it. She made the list. Rod, choose your number my 10. My number 10 was my number one last year. I'm going to just go with Donald Trump. Only because, um, and, and you know, I hate, I hate to do it to y'all because, I mean, Donald Trump may, may very well be on both of y'all's lists. I think they were pretty um, unbiased when it comes to what we talk about on the podcast. But Donald Trump just found a way to stay relevant. And of course, he's the president. I mean, that's yeah, enough he's, relevant. He's the president. Well, that's relevant enough that he's the president. But outside of him being the president, he found a way to just stick his hand in every cookie jar possible. So, um, so that's the only reason why we talked about it earlier. How Donald Trump created the term fake news, and we made a whole podcast on the term fake news fake on the news. hashtag fake, yeah, right. fake news. I love that. So whenever you told me that, I was like, you know what? I got to find a spot for him on my list. Um, Donald Trump number ten, just because of his, um, his, his thirst for relevance. I'm I'm gonna back up and tell you that Donald Trump did not make my list this year. I just felt like he had kind of a fuckboy year. Once he actually got into the office, he wasn't as dope as he like last year. He was dope. He was like number three on my list last year. He finessed the whole country. Like I feel like this year he just kind of was fucking shit up. No, I like, think I think. I think, unnecessarily fucking shit up. Like, so I'm going to tell you like this. I'll, I'll, I'll even go back to spit some of your words and talk about how we think on our feet. You said that your list was full of trolls. Donald Trump is the ultimate troll. Absolutely. And I mean that Absolutely. figuratively and literally. He is the ultimate troll. He looks like a troll. He's got troll he hair. He does troll. And he, he, does um, troll he trolls. <clears throat> like he's on every. So I have, a, I have a question. White human being who's on our podcast representing white people of all um, shades and ages. Where is Donald Trump on your list? Donald Trump was too obvious for my fire ass list, so I left him off. <laughs> I have better things to get to. <laughs> well, one of us got to be logical, so I'm, I'm gonna take. Got you. Tr- so I'll take Donald Trump. Donald Trump made list. the rise. Of, hey, that's why Carlos called you a Trump supporter. I'll go to my number nine. Um, I like my number nine switched on that Trump supporter. <laughs> shout out. Shout out Los. I know it was uh, <laughs> this podcast is brought cool. to you by Los. AKA C A P AKA uh what the bully. Yeah. AKA get um, the score fix for the last week. <laughs> my number nine probably won't appear on either one of your lists. Actually, I'm probably a hundred percent sure. My number nine was Don Lemon. Um like Last year, I kind of made a, a little shout out to Van Jones. Don Lemon has become the black voice of news anchors, which I never thought he'd be. Like, I actually did not like Don Lemon last year, but he used to be super lame, but he is he's like coming around. Like, Don Lemon's holiday is this week. If you don't know anything about CNN um, on New Year's Eve because you're out being young people having a good time, I'm old. So I stay home sometimes on New Year's Eve and watch TV. Don Lemon gets wow. drunk on TV every year oh, for New Year's right. Eve and be and be cutting up. Never stays I, home like, for New Year's. <laughs> so Stop one, it. I want to tell you And he's you from that. Baton Rouge. And one more thing about Don Lemon before tell you tell. Oh, go ahead. No, tell me one more, more thing about Don Lemon. Don Lemon. One more thing. He is living his best life. I know people like to use that term a lot. I, the thing I hate the most, like I got friends, right, who like date white girls, like, or, or live with white girls and like, that's like their old lady. Oh my God. And they like, I don't want to bring them around my family. I don't want really people, too many people to know that that's what I do. It's kind of different. I know people who are gay 
and are like, I don't want to tell anybody I'm gay. I don't want to bring it out of the closet, whatever. My nigga, you 37 years old. You 31 years old. Live your best life. Bang, bang. Like, come, come out and let people know that's how you rock and live your life. That's what I like about Don Lemon. Don Lemon had his white man boyfriend holding hands with him. Walking down the street in 2017, he 51 years old. He not hiding behind no curtains or whatever. He living his best life. I like when people just do them. Like that bothers me when people are like I don't want. I, I I care about what other people think. So for that extra thing, Don Lemon hopped on the list for me. Don that's, Lemon's my number. That's nine. awesome. That's awesome. And I know if we would have did like a top ten of like 2015, Michael <laughs> Sam would have been on your list because he made a two, <laughs> a two, gr- a two guys one cup video at draft night. You know when he was eating that ice cream. Yeah. Over. <laughs> so cool. I want to tell you that whenever you said Don Lemon, I've heard the name Don Lemon before, but I definitely thought that that was a mixed drink that I was gonna order tonight in Jim. <laughs> like let me hey let me get a Don Lemon. And thinking that it would have been like a Don Perignon and lemon or some shit like that. I don't know. I hate so, you. That's why I trump on your list. Hey, right. let's be honest though. Michael Sam's little white boyfriend gets destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> that little dude was so small. We call it that Lemon. You so know, Michael small. Sam put that Lemon on him. Jesus. Michael Sam got big too. He got fat too. But when you get fat, that, that dick go back. Boy. Well, nah, when you get fat, that dick kind of like regresses to the mean. Like when he was like working out, he probably was destroying him. He probably not giving when him When he was that. in that league, when he was on them Rams, he was ramming him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, he why, was on the, he got, that's why he got drafted like, by the Rams. Hey, I don't know hey, if you knew that. All right, we'll get off this gay thing, but would it not Hold up, hold up, Chase. Hold up, hold up, CNH. Hold up. The dick in that relationship? <laughs> would that surprise you? Hold up, no, stop, stop, stop. Welcome Raj, to the Raj, you said he could only be drafted by the Rams. I think he, there's another team he could be drafted by. Uh, maybe the Raiders? The Packers. <laughs> the Packers. The Packers. You're wild. This is a. This is. I just want to say that the views of Eldo Nice do not reflect on the views of the best radio podcast. You said the Rams. You said the Rams. <laughs> but everyone, I guess everyone can pack too. I don't know. I'm old. Let's, let's get with the number nine. All right, number nine was Don Lemon for me. What y'all got for number nine? Uh, I'm going to actually skip over Chase since I'm a, a, a regular on this Yeah, podcast. so number nine, I got uh, J.J. Watt. Um, mm. This is not funny and or entertaining, but J.J. Watt, anybody that raises over $30 million for a hurricane-devastated region should be on a list of top ten people. With other people's money? Sure. Hell yeah. Would you do it with your money? <laughs> You should have put Keaton Jones up there too. Bro, I, hey, Keaton, Keaton Jones. Jones. Mom was hey, a hey, don't ruin Keaton my Jones list. Don't ruin my list. <laughs> hey, JJ Watt, using other people's money to do something positive, good for him. Hey, I, I, I actually, I'm not JJ Watt. Definitely didn't make my list, but I do want to say that there was some like backlash towards JJ Watt about not using his own money. Um, when you can cool. use other people, if if you had to go to the liquor store and I said, "Hey, bro, here's a twenty. You take my 20 instead of using your 20. Every what day, the fuck are you buying with 20? It's not Cheap the point. Liquor. It's not the point. Half pint. Stay on the point. <laughs> so, uh, so the, you know, I, I, get where, I get where you're rich going. Rich and but rare. Nah, I'm <laughs> rich and rare. Canadian hunter. <laughs> That's where we are right now. Oh, you you should have said a half pint. A half pint is something really good for 20. <laughs> I can't wait until you hear my side of the uh, my side of the audio and hear that I did say a half pint. So, um, oh, did you? I oh, did. Okay. But there it's you okay. Go. Your laughter was uh, pacifying what I was talking about. It's cool, though. I don't <laughs> mind your laughter because it means that we're, we're funny on this, on this end. Hey, can we Number post nine. this post show and see who gets the most votes for most we're definitely fire doing list? We, we make fire I will win this. We make fire, fire album list. covers or uh, podcast covers. Yep. So your list is going to be on there. My list will win. Have no fear. Uh, I'm going to actually we, go with nigga, my list. French? I'm going to actually <laughs> go with my number nine which is way more fire than any of y'all's number nine. And I hope that she is not on y'all's list because I don't think that y'all think like that. Uh, Megan Markle is my number nine. You know who Megan Markle is? I know who it is. So, like, I'm, like, loving, like, honestly, like, I can't, like, if somebody's, like, kind of black, I'm cool with Paula Patton. You're black, you know? Like, if you're kind of black, you're black. Tiger Woods is black. You know, who do we talk about? Jordan Peele. He's black. Keegan Key, it's black. Megan Markle, Roger Green. Black. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is. Um, so uh, you know, kind of black. This lady is about to be. So you know, she's a whatever actor. 
Actress. about to be. She's, that's, that's, that's be well, you know, it's, I'm, I'm being, I'm being. Th- uh, oh, she was yeah. actually an actress before. I didn't yeah, know that. No, because she, uh, me too. So, um, she, just... she <laughs> is about to be the first black princess of England, and I'm, I'm down with that. I could not have, yeah. I couldn't not have her on my list because she's about to be the first black princess. She's fire too. And she's really good looking. She's fire. I mean, Prince Harry can, you know, I mean, Prince, Prince Harry. Prince Harry busting up, though. If I was him, I would have married Kate and Ashley. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> okay, Kanye. Like, I like, hear you. I, I, hear you. I understood it, but it wasn't funny enough to laugh at. It was, so I moved it was, on from it. It was just to make you say, oh. Oh. And I did. CNH. Yeah, absolutely. CNH. I need you to understand that um, sometimes. It's an obligatory laugh. Roger's not always funny. Like sometimes, sometimes we just laugh. Sometimes Stop we just laugh. Lee. That's what we do. <laughs> All right, so we're on to number eight. Number eight, you've already given yours, Raj, which was Jordan Peele. My number eight was, and it might come higher on your list. It might be on your guys' list. I don't know. My number eight was Conor McGregor. Mm. Oh, I like that. Um... It's not often that somebody makes three times as much money as you in a boxing match, yet you're still the person who really won. Conor McGregor made $30 million for just getting out there and trying hard. You knew he wasn't going to win. He was he was doing like like J.J. Watt. That, that's, that's a term I heard somebody on the internet call J.J. Watt one time, which I thought was the funniest shit ever. Dude was like, J.J. Watt's a, JJ Watt's a fucking try hard. Like, that's all he was. He, he's, like, always doing the most. Like, trying all hard. Conor McGregor got in that ring and just tried hard and got $30 million to get beat up. He was, like, nobody before the year started in the mainstream. Like, UFC people, people who watch, like, combat sports and stuff like that, or just ESPN, knew who Conor McGregor was. But he wasn't anybody important. This year, he got in there. And he was a troll. He trolled motherfuckers. He did that whole tour with... Man, I went. I was out there for the fight. It was crazy. Conor McGregor is number eight for me. I want to tell you that that is on my list. But just like Chase brought up the um, solar eclipse for his honorable mention, I had to put something that wasn't a person. So uh, on my list at number four was the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather. Um, okay. Just interaction. Not necessarily the match itself. But just the interaction. Yeah, it can't be the fight. It wasn't the fight. It can't be the fight. It was everything, including the fight. So, uh, so I guess speaking on that, because I will just skip my number four as well, uh, since it seems like, you know, you value you have a things repetitive uh, number less. Three in the pecking order list. Right. Yeah. You just re- you just <laughs> using using my list and just kind of. Uh, well, I figured y'all would have hit one of yours. mine earlier. I don't know. So you know, Ooh. whatever. Um, that. That, how I felt about that was, so Conor McGregor actually brought light to certain situations. I almost got beat up by a supreme feminist because I was openly cheering for Floyd Mayweather. And only because Conor McGregor brought to light that Floyd Mayweather beats up his his people, his family, his kids. He do beat women. So he beat women. I almost he got beat happens. up. So, like, I'm just thinking to myself, not only did not only did this match, like, was it big for, like, people that were in the UFC? or MMA, and big for people that were into boxing, or in, in big into people that were just into sports in general. But it also brought to light people that weren't into any of that stuff. Feminists. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. me tours out there that were like, that were that had nothing to do, had no no thoughts about the, no thoughts about the, the outcome of the match, only that Floyd Mayweather was a piece of shit, and that they hope McGregor right. wins. You know, it, it just brought out a whole bunch of things. I feel like it almost even brought out uh, like a black versus white thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what do you mean? Because, almost. Well, I mean, I McGregor feel like if you were, Let's, I mean, he's I mean, he's Irish. Irish. no, no, That's but, but more people out there, like white Americans, were like, "Oh, Conor McGregor, like right. fuck Mayweather." Yeah, it was and, a whole, It really wasn't. It was a whole. You know, it was a bunch of things. I will agree because in no situation will I ever root for the non-American. <laughs> Don't you love him? Never. <laughs> I, th- I thought he was going. I literally were, thought were going for a, you just fell in love Irish with him. Guy. You literally no, just no, fell in I, love with him. No, I, 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 I fucks with CNH from way back. You know, we got history. My right. thing is, I thought he was about to say, I like, I thought he was about to be the realist and say, I will never watch a something and and root for the black guy over the white That's guy. That's not how it works. Because, really because, hold up. That's how I feel. I will always go for the black guy. Not always. I can't say that. But most times I would. 
But we made that point on the podcast a few year, months ago that why would you I'm always going for the American. Why would you pull against and the American? And I love American? it. I know Ever. that. Ever. You can't go against the American. I love that shit. There's no, there's no point. Did you go no for point. Russia in 1980 in hockey? I mean, fuck. <laughs> Like, I like Anthony Joshua as a boxer. Like, he's one of my favorites. I like, I, I can't wait for him to fight Deontay Wilder. But if J.J. Watt did what we said he should do and retire from football and box, I'm going for J.J. Watt. Right. Absolutely. Hey, all America, J.J. Watt. Absolutely. I'm going for it. Devontae Wilder, <laughs> shout out Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> and he just lost all of it. He just lost the back card that he just got. <laughs> all right. So let's get back to some relevance here with my number eight. Um, yeah, even yeah. though this guy shot zero people and got blamed for over 50 deaths, Stephen Paddock. <laughs> God damn, dog. <laughs> An arm's still gone bad. If we're talking about a top 10 list of most relevant stories in 2017, Stephen Paddock was on my news feed way more than most people. I'm waiting for it. He's talking about the Vegas shooter. That is him. So why didn't he shoot anyone? Okay. All right. <laughs> why did you say give he me, had... give, me, give me 20 seconds of unsolicited attention here. An Go arms ahead. deal. You got it. An arms deal was going down in that room. Shit went south. He got shot in the head. Now, the American government was in on that arms deal. So they can't act like the ISIS arms deal who were buying those arms were a part of it. Stephen Paddock got shot in the head. It is proven that arms were staged in the room for the pictures. And so Stephen Paddock got... Are you going to tell me one man brought up 20 guns, busted out a bulletproof window, and shot up Jason Aldean's entire following? No. But Stephen Paddock was on my newsfeed. I, I, I question what else... Can you please... What Do the disclaimer, you... please, Roger. I need the disclaimer. Yeah, no, the no, no, views... no. The views of the Best Friend Weekend podcast don't necessarily. In six months when this come when this theory comes out, it's, it's this as is true. This is gone. This is for guys. This is history. Do you Why smoke a lot? No, he don't smoke at all. Why is it forgotten though? Because it is. Okay, this ain't coming out. We, we know. Mm. Okay, hey, this theory will come out very soon as what actually happened. And so it's a theory. I... Yeah, but they I love the I love CIA the theory. It's can find interesting. Somebody in the Middle East in five minutes, but we can't even tell tell you why he shot people in Vegas. Nah, <laughs> sometimes got that. crazy is crazy. Stephen, you got that man. Stephen hey, Paddock. You know I can't. I, I can't. Take, hey, I can't I take be mad at you. One. Listeners, mad. listeners. Stephen Paddock. I, if y'all if y'all feel that theory. I will put you in contact with CNH. Definitely. Give us hey, a Google, hit us Google, up. Google I will give you CNH's. He, so he can, yeah, one hundred percent. He will be tagged in the graphic this week. Yeah, I got Steven you. Stephen Paddock, you. number eight. We're gonna hop to number seven. Um, CNH's number seven was Jordan Peele, so we've already got to that. My number seven, which was very similar to what um, CNH said earlier, like and what Raj just did with the Conor McGregor, Floyd McGregor. I mean Floyd Mayweather fight. My number seven was Hurricanes. Miami Hurricanes football was dope this year. They had the the turnover chain, which was like all was the shit. Um, obviously, there was Hurricane the Harvey. And, very quickly, <laughs> right? There was Hurricane Harvey. There was Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. Hurricane Irma in Florida. And um, I, I in Houston, everywhere I went to um eat dinner, there's been good hurricane drinks in restaurants. <laughs> And in 1995, E-40 made a song, E-40 in the click, and it was called Slurricane. I don't know if you remember that song. It was like, Hurricane, but you can call me Slurricane. Slurricane, strong enough to start an engine, man. And they say, man. So I'm thinking it's something to do with Terrence Howard. <laughs> right. So it's like hurricanes have been, like hurricanes have been killing it this year. <laughs> and oh, damn, I hate the way I just said that. Uh, that sounded uh, bad. Uh, hurricanes uh, were prevalent this year. I mean, this motherfucker just said Stephen Paddock. That like, almost I can't makes say me, hurricanes. I meant to be dark. You accidentally were dark. That almost <laughs> makes me wish that your house got flooded away. <laughs> 
Almost. Not quite, but almost. The fact that you make a hurricane killing reference and you were in the same city almost makes me wish that you were a refugee right now. Fuck you, what's your number seven? <laughs> right. like curtains behind you were wet. Like, that's just... Right? Awful. I wish you had moldy <laughs> curtains. Damn. All right, so yeah, my... uh, <clears throat> This guy was on my list last year. Don't remember what number. Probably can go look it up. Um, Probably can go listen to the podcast, which I do every week. Probably um, can turn on... No, you don't. <laughs> Chill, man. I gotta, you Go gotta let the people know that I listen to the podcast every week, right? I, for for self evaluation. Um, my number seven was LeBron James. Okay, uh, LeBron so, James. So it was for a, a, a let's say for two reasons. I probably can come up with more, but two of the main reasons was um, I think LeBron did all he can do, and Kyrie, but LeBron more so did all he can do to win another championship this year. So he got to the finals yet again. Was it the seventh or the eighth time? Sixth, it was the sixth. Oh, t- total, it was the total. Time. You talk eight, eight. I think it's okay. So cool, like eight. Eight. Oh yeah, it's been a bunch of times. Like he's been there a bunch of times, and and also a bunch of times in a row. But I think yeah, whenever six, I, I guy, I, I like. I, 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 I think the theme of my um the theme of my list is iconic status. So like, um, the fact that a guy with the iconic status of LeBron James can get on Twitter. And call the president of the United States a bum, a bum, bum, a bum, and get away with it in 2017. It just makes him not necessarily that I liked it because I didn't necessarily like the move, but the fact that somebody like that can do that is is worthy of being on my list. So for a number of reasons, but more so because he called the president a bum on on Twitter. Hey, it was crazy. You, you call Hillary Clinton a bum, and you're dead in ten days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got everybody on your ass after that. No, I, no, I'm I, not a Trump supporter. I, I'm just saying there's a lot of dead people around Hillary Clinton. Uh, you got to look at him. Uh, my thing is, <laughs> I, um, Le- LeBron didn't make my list, and it was all of the positive things he did this year. I really, I really do rock with him. But my thing was, at the end of the day, you didn't bring the city a championship like last year when he ended up like top four for me. Um. And you lost Kyrie. I feel like it's something about LeBron. No, I mean, I, honestly, I feel like it's Kyrie's fault. Because Kyrie probably was like on some um, wanting to be that guy. So when I say quote unquote fault, it was his doing. It wasn't like LeBron could have done anything about it. Because Kyrie probably never wanted LeBron to come to Cleveland to begin with. My thing is just that he's such a big personality that he ended up losing. Like Kyrie ended up going over there and he's balling. With the ball, I mean, next year it may be different when LeBron goes and evis- eviscerates Kyrie in the playoffs. I might feel differently, but right so now, so I want to, I want to actually just kind of speak on that. Like I feel like, the, like in this situation or in this aspect of of, of thing that we're talking about, uh, there's two different types of people. So there's the Kyries of the world, and there's the Scotty Pippins of the world. And mm-hmm. if you really like look into like basketball history, so you know that Jordan left basketball for like a full season. Um. The year that he was gone for a full season, Scottie Pippen was an MVP candidate. All right, off, off top, I didn't know that. Like that's only that's only what I know from reading and watching. They YouTube they videos. they lost like they lost like four less games that year. Yeah, it was like the craziest thing in the world. Scottie Pippen was all four crazy more games good. or whatever. So all I'm saying is, is like Scottie Pippen in his prime could have went to another team and probably been, you know, like the greatest player of all time on that particular team. Kyrie Irving, of course, I don't think is going to be the greatest player of all time on the Celtics, but he's definitely <laughs> doing enough because the Celtics have a storied history. If he'd have gone to like, if he'd have come to it's the Celtics. Pelicans, yeah. Kyrie Irving would be the best player of all time. He's better than Anthony Davis as a player total. But what I'm saying is, is that Kyrie Irving, I guess, recognized that he was good enough to go on another team and be one of the best players in the NBA. Whenever I look at House of Highlights, which is out of House of Highlights, which is my favorite. Instagram sports. Who is page. this? Po- who is this podcast brought to you by? This podcast is brought to you by House of Highlights. Um, whenever I watch their page, it's full of Kyrie Irving because he just goes ham every night. So you know, I can't fault him for that. I can't fault him for wanting to leave and not be in that spotlight. And and I can't also can't fault him for like not wanting to be under LeBron. Hold up, it's, hold up. Can I ask you a question? Is Kyrie on your list? Kyrie's not on my list. So fuck him. Let's go to number six. Um, number six. <laughs> is he here? Number six. Well, fuck him. Number six. We still talking about. We still talking about basketball. I'm gonna start with my number six. We still talking about hoops. 
My number six was two niggas. I mean, because y'all say I do this. I'm do, I'm about to do this two two people in a row. Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. I just the Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant package saga. Because I feel like Westbrook left. I mean, I'm sorry. Durant left and he won the ship. Westbrook stayed and he averaged a triple double and shot. Every I remember shot. last year. Right, but I remember last year when we talked about Kobe, and um, we were Kobe was on our list, and I said the thing about Kobe that's awesome is Kobe fans will always be like, Kobe scored eighty one. What did your dude do? He scored eighty one. So what? He had that huge number that he, like Jordan won six rings, six and zero. Oh. Like there's always something you could always. Westbrook averaged a triple double. Like what you gonna tell me about Westbrook? He averaged a triple double. So he gave that to his Westbrook supporters. So my number six package deal. And I didn't even get into KD a, b- a bunch because KD was on the cover of GQ this month. KD is arguably the best, pl- arguably the best player in the NBA right now. Arguably, no. They they arguably. they have encapsulated my number yeah. six. You want to argue? All right, staying on that same topic before we switch. Number six is for me is actually Kevin Durant. Okay, starts there you the, go. Starts the we- year hated, hated. Because he went to Golden State by people that hate on people that are great. I can't stand people that hate Kevin Durant. I can't stand people that hate LeBron James. He be- he wins first championship. Becomes arguably the best player in the world. And then gets on a magazine that he has no business being on. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Kevin Durant. Good for you. <laughs> Kevin Durant's not GQ at all. So I'm moving on from Kevin Durant. Let's get down to the next one. Or did I not give my number six? Yeah, I didn't. My number six is it probably higher on your list. Uh, future. Kudos to Future. We talked about it already. We talked about it. I, I see you crossing him out. We talked about him already. Um, you know, I feel like the I feel like I feel like the Jordan flu game picture with um with Future. That I think you posted this with future inserted on Jordan's yeah, face of instead of instead of Jordan. Yeah, showed just how important to me the future album and Hendrix album was to me. And also, I want to say a sustain uh, like I think that there was somewhere along the line I don't know what year it was somewhere along the line Future became an icon like Future beca- mm-hmm. like I remember seeing Future in the Lafayette Airport and I was like oh whatever. That nigga, I don't really. I, he's cool. I heard a couple of songs, um, but then now, if I were to see Future in the airport, I'd probably scream. To be honest, you'd scream. I might scream if he was as close to me as he was in the Lafayette Airport. I might scream. That's Future. I'm not gonna just. It's not like seeing Dikembe Mutombo or Too Short in the strip club. Like if I saw Future, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot different of an, of an experience. And he talks shit about corny ass Russell Wilson. I love that man. <laughs> I like corny as Russell Wilson, so I can't. I, I, I do I can't, too. But I also like that. to hear him make a verse that says, "You went from loving a dude drinking codeine to loving a dude drinking creatine." That is an actual verse <laughs> in a song. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm. I'm gonna be honest. Future didn't make my list this year. Like I didn't. Ha- I didn't rely as. I didn't lean on musicians as much as I've done in the past. Like Meek Mill was obvious. Was my highest. Rated musician, honestly. I didn't well, I'm sorry, I'm lying. My number five. Let's let's go right into it. My number five. I'm sorry. He gave it six already, yeah. Number five was uh black girls. Mm-hmm. And specifically three black girls. Cardi uh, B. Issa Ray, Issa Ray, Cardi B, and Tiffany Haddish. Cardi B is not um, black. Is Cardi B black? I don't know. She's black enough. She wanna be black. Thing about him is um, Tiffany Haddish, first black woman to host Saturday Night Live. Um, Cardi B, first female rapper to top the singles chart in the last 19 years. And, um, Issa Rae, first black woman to create and start her own premium cable network series. I don't know what Charlemagne's got, like, he's got a heart on for all of them. He always, like, is posting about them or whatever. But I like him too. I just don't like him to the extent that everybody like him. I just feel like black women kind of doing their thing right now. And um, I, I needed to show a little love you, there. You probably so don't know girl. the answer to this question, but I just have to feel like Nicki Minaj has had a top single hit in the last 19 years. Oh, no. um, Probably not. I don't. You know what I think it is? I think it's the 
I think it's the overall chart, not like the rap chart or the hip hop chart. Like and overall singular, billboard. And, and it's not a collaboration. Yeah, think about it. Nicki Minaj hasn't had a song that like little kids like no, absolutely not. Hmm. Bodak Yellow is bigger than anything that Nicki Minaj has ever done. I'll put that on everything. Okay, cool. And so what number was that for you? Number five. Cool. Well, let me hop into my number five because I see that we're uh, pressing on time. Um, so I stay with the music uh, also. And like I said, st- sustained or gained iconic status. I feel like somewhere along the lines in 2017, Migos went from like, huh. like, like, like a, almost like a, um, like I'm a sleep. niche, like a niche I'm band. Sleep. To like a iconic status band who's just making album after album, hit after hit, and also like I'm collaboration sleep. after collaboration. So me, I'm sleep. Why are you sleeping? Cause I was supposed to put Migos in my list. You're I'm sleep. Migos, Migos went from like literally nothing to something quickly. So when we talk about the culture, they made an album called Culture, culture. and it was the shit. I, do it for the I mean. You're right. You're right. Like, Migos should you be. You talk about Co- Bodak Yellow, but how long you have Apple Music or something title? How long? Bad was and bougie. Bad and bougie at the top of the. What, what you gonna level on bad and bougie? What do you mean I got level on bad and bougie? <laughs> you mean I got level on bad and bougie? That shit. Right. So my that number way. five, going back to athletes, if you make the best, most relevant team <laughs> in your sport relevant again, you should be in the top ten of people. Aaron Judge, as whack as he is as a human mm. being, deserves to be in the top ten. Mind you, I gotta say that CNH disclaimer: is an avid baseball he, player. CNH plays baseball. <laughs> so I was about to there disclaimer, are no but baseball guys on my list, but but this is an individualized. Judge, Aaron Judge was in the news ten in the top. He top wore 10 number ninety nine. So on this most Aaron fire Judge. top ten list, Aaron Judge is number five. Okay, cool. I'll give you that. I have no commentary on Aaron Judge. All I know is he's, he's, a, he's a big, an uncommentary guy. He won. He won the home black black run dude. derby. He won the home run derby, and he's so kind of black. So he maybe should be on mine too. Did, hey, I, have I just a know he question. lost. Michael Strahan. I know he lost I'll to the Ghost Rose for having a gap in your teeth. You're old, Aaron Judge. <laughs> there were braces around. Come on. I know the Strohs earned history this year. And when we did that, we did it going through the Yankees. And I say we because the Astros are my baseball team. But I still fucks with Aaron Judge. He hits long home runs. I don't like him as much as Giancarlo Stanton because he's not as fucking handsome as Giancarlo Stanton. I wouldn't hang out with Aaron Judge, but he was newsworthy <laughs> enough to be in the top ten. <laughs> I'll go with that. Uh, my number four was the hashtag Me, Me Too ladies. Hmm. Pretty much everybody who... Pretty much everybody, I mean, we talked about them on the podcast every week. It was the driving force behind our podcast a lot of times. It That movement was actually started by a lady named Tarana Burke as a grassroots movement to reach sexual assault survivors in underprivileged communities. And um, Alyssa, my young, Alyssa Milano actually took it mainstream. You do know Alyssa Milano, right? From um, She used to run NFL apparel and Who's the Boss? She was like the little fine child in Who's the Boss? I can't say fine child. I was a child too, so it's okay to say fine child. But if you watch okay, the show now, charm. No, I wouldn't think she was. No, I wouldn't think she was. You'd be a like, fine oh my god, look now. at that little fine twelve-year-old that just fucked <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> no, charmed and shit. Speaking Whatever. Of anyway, me too. hey, speaking of that, do me you know the was... Cash Me Outside girl is fourteen. Yeah, she's probably no. like yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yes, bro. How bad do How you feel right now? How about that? You've lusted after her. <laughs> How about that? What's your number four? I know, I know. Chase's is Conor Mc. No, Mine Rogers is Conor, the Conor, Conor McGregor. Conor. No, this way, hey, I have a great story with this one. So this man sent an assistant in his office a dildo in the office mail with a note that said, "I can't wait to use this on you later." Who's Matt Hugh Lauer, Freeze? Who does this? Matt Lauer, standing ovation. Good oh, morning, Lauer. America. <laughs> 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 that Lauer was out of pocket this year. How is he? Your t- <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I first heard of Matt Lauer, I thought that that was a baseball player. Well, let's let's no, be honest. You actually... Wow. 
Roger so actually Matt said Lauer that it was the guy from um, Bad Boys. 99 of them wanted to smash Matt Lauer. He wanted to smash number 100 who got him in trouble. <laughs> but that's with damn near every one of these. I, that's why he can't. That's why CNH can't be on the podcast every week. Because we would get put off the air. <laughs> you can't have that opinion. <laughs> Matt Lauer well, slash the- Harvey Weinstein is my number four. <laughs> Wait, he threw that in late. <laughs> All right, um, my number three, Levar Ball. Ooh. I know people thought Levar Ball was gonna be higher Ooh. for me, man. I know everybody thought he was gonna be higher for me. All three sons signed to play pearl ball. I like Ball in the Family. It's a good TV show. He's yep. monogamous with his wife for all indications, and he's funny. He's got that yeah, crazy uncle orange. factor. Yeah, his teeth are terrible. Terrible. But LeVar Ball is my number three. Pot calling the kettle black. So, um, Bro, I have beautiful fake teeth <laughs> So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, LeVar Ball should be on my list. I, I feel like just like you were sleeping on Migos, I'm sleeping on LeVar Ball. He definitely should have been on LeVar Ball would be on my list if I didn't order a pair of shoes and I got a size 13 for a left foot and a size 12 for a right foot. No, you I didn't. I wear size 10. Yes. Wow. What you ordered Big you order? Baller brand shoes. The first ones that came out, ordered them. The black ones? For $450? Yes. Not $495. I got wow. a left 13 and a right 12. I wear a 10. I'm impressed. You more black than both of us? Wow. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Wow. Why not mine? I told you, bro. Why not mine? I told you. Can we get back to the fact I can't even wear these damn shoes? <laughs> Send me the 12. I wear a 12 and a half. Right. Oh, good. Okay. You have one. You have one shoe. You have That's one cool. Shoe. Get Lavar to autograph that thing, man. We good. Mm-hmm. Are we on number three yet? Yes, y'all number three. So uh, I was Lavar Ball was my number this, three. Though, so like honestly, like I'm just gonna switch my number two and my number three, um, because <laughs> I, I like this guy so much, but I don't really like this guy that much. Kendrick Lamar is my number three. Okay. And again, I'm staying with the motto of sustained status. I think he dropped damn and it just it just was a showstopper. I asked a girl Georgie. today, I asked a girl today if she knew the difference between half stepping and showstopping. Right? So like I was, she was like, nah. I was like, cool, well, showstopping is whenever you show up and everything stops because you that you that bad. Whenever Kendrick Lamar yeah. dropped damn, it was like, okay. One, this is a pretty good album, but most importantly, Kendrick Lamar dropped a new album. You know what I'm saying? Like, forget gotcha. the fact if the yeah, album's good you. or not, Kendrick Lamar dropped a new album. And I like, struggled to, like... AKA out... Benzis to me, just the car. Yeah, <laughs> I, I struggled to find out, like, why, like, where did this guy come from? Like, I, he's, he's great, like... He's good, but to me, he's not the best, but people treat him like he is. So I, I give him, like, I give him a little something. I give him number three for that. CNH, who you got for number three? Number three, I got Bitcoin. <laughs> Go ahead. There's, there's nothing more relevant in investments right now than Bitcoin. And I don't know if people are going to lose their ass or everybody's going to be a millionaire, but Bitcoin was everywhere. <laughs> I need you to go back a couple of episodes and listen to our um, rant on Bitcoin, but I I think that you you're onto something as it being a very now thing in 2017 that was um an important thing to talk about. On um, my number two, and I mean if it if it isn't on your list, it's fine. But if it is, I would hope it's one of your top two. Number two is Colin Kaepernick. He doesn't have to play football anymore, and he doesn't have CTE. He got out of the game. Like, that's like a drug dealer getting out of the game without getting popped, getting sent to jail or shot. Cotton Kaepernick doesn't ever have to play football again. He's not going to have CTE, and he is more famous right now and has more earning potential right now than he had at any time. Well, I'm not going to say the more earning potential. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I, I was about to question Yeah, quarterback that. in the NFL, he probably could get a, a $40 million a year. They, they making stupid money to be a quarterback. But he has long-term sustainability that I fuck with. Like, he could be like a, like a leader of a bunch of things for a long time. I want to tell Colin you just, Kaepernick, I always, I always, 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 always watch SportsCenter top 10 and wait until I see what number one is, right? 
And yeah. every single time, number one is always lackluster. So okay. for that, the point I'm trying to make is, is that Colin Kaepernick is my number one. And me telling you that okay. just made my Absolutely. list lackluster. Cool. So my number no. two is good enough for me. No, no, no. no I don't think that no, my list. No, 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 no. Talk about Colin Kaepernick, then come back to your number that's two. Not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that my, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about my number two. I'm saying the fact that Colin Kaepernick was your number two and it was so close to my number one and him being my number one was like a buzzkill. It's all good. Yeah. But I do agree with you on his importance. Um, regardless if you like it or not, the impact that he made in the NFL this year was unmatched. Yeah. I don't think anybody's ever done anything like that in sports. And sports are very important to me. I think sports are very important to you. And of course, sports are very important to CNH. I, I can tell he's baseball. Absolutely. Guy. The impact that he made on sports this year it was unmatched in history. And that's that's why my number two goes the same route but a different route. Malcolm Jenkins. So your argument here is, who's more important? The guy that starts the game or the guy that finishes the game? I would argue that Malcolm Jenkins starting a Coalition. group that literally got $100 million to the cause... Money doesn't solve everything, but I'll take $100 million and I'll be way happier than if I didn't have it. Malcolm Jenkins got something done off the laurels of Colin, Colin Kaepernick without ruining I like his the, career. I like the fact that our number twos and number ones are all about the NFL protests because, I mean, that was the most, I think that was the most, I think we're making a point to say that that was the most important thing in 2017. The NFL protest was kind of like the biggest fucking thing that happened this year. It was and, just more widespread. Yeah. You, he picked Malcolm Jenkins. We picked Colin. We're both talking about that same um that same that same thing there. Um Raj, do you want to say your number like two? Finish, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you good. So starting off with my number two, <laughs> which is actually now my number one, because I didn't mind putting him, <laughs> putting him at number one. I just wanted Mal I just wanted Colin Kaepernick to be my number one because of his impact. My number one, or my number two, whatever you want to call it, is Jeff Bezos. For my whole entire life, Bill Gates has been the richest man in the world. I mean, I know for your whole entire life, it's been the same thing, right? Absolutely. Okay, so... Well, close to it, yeah. Bill Gates has been the richest man in the world for my entire life. That is no longer the thing. Jeff Bezos on Black Friday became the richest man in the world at $99 billion. Anybody that... So, like, okay, we talk about Colin Kaepernick in history and what he did. Cool, Colin Kaepernick, Malcolm Jenkins, $100 million. That says nothing to $99 billion. What's the difference between $100 million and $99 billion? What's the difference? Like 10 times. Oh, no, 100 times, I think. 100 times? Can you tell me the percentage? I don't know if you can. I'm I your can't. math guy. Not right okay, cool. Like but it's an outrageous percentage. So because he started Amazon out of his trunk, I don't care where he started it's, it at. It's it just it's not 1%. it's not how you start; it's how you finish. So he got you. I, hear, got I, I see. You. So he's the richest person in the world now, and I never thought that that would happen. That's interesting. Um, uh, so CNH, it's me and you left. Who want, do you want me to do my number one, or you do your yeah, number you one? Ahead. What I we got doing? More important shit to talk about. Okay, so my number one was Keaton Jones. Um, no, okay, number one, number one was not Keaton Jones. Okay, my number one was actually Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp was my favorite person for 2017. Um, you're joking. He used to be Sha he used to be Sterling Sharp's little brother. Now he's in the Hall of Fame. Undisputed is the shit and has. Sir Planet, ESPN's first take as the, the optimal show. He will forever be tied to Stephen A. Smith, but guess what? He's better than him. And um, he be on them miles. Boy, I had a whole song. He was thirsting after Nicole Murphy while he had a whole girlfriend, a fiance at the crib. That just means he's regular. He looks at Nicole Murphy as being a celebrity and he looks at himself as being a regular person. I love his regular personism. I love that Shannon Sharp smokes black and miles and drinks Hennessy. Shannon Sharp is my number one person of 2017. 
Okay, so your number one lives <coughs> next to a good segue of my number one because Matt Ryan and Shannon Sharp live next to each other. Um, <laughs> this fucker say Matt Ryan. Tw- no, no, Matt Ryan is not my number one. He's the segue. Oh, twenty eight to oh. three. Twenty eight to three is my number one because it personally okay. hurts and it still is going on <laughs> from February to right now. I've never been more upset. I, okay, it was twenty eight three. I was at a sports bar. Got hammered <coughs> because the game was over. So I had to go from a happy drunk to a pissed drunk. Went home, kicked the dog, went to sleep, didn't want to wake up. 28 to 3 is my number one. Hey, I felt so happy to come up with that 28 to 3 joke at the beginning of the podcast. The fact that 28 to 3 is your number one makes me like feel bad that I went there so early. Like no, I saw it coming but full I'm a Saints fan, should. so I don't I'm a Saints fan, so I don't really give a fuck. But like honestly, <laughs> like I I but I don't want you I don't want you to be in that in that in that place. But I mean 28 to 3 would suck if we were on like it would suck as bad as if no, I'm not even gonna talk no shit to existence. Um <laughs> No, but let's be real. Just, you should be hit in the face with 28 to 3. As much as possible because it happened. Matt Ryan can't even throw a pass this year because of twenty eight to three. Can I ask you a question? Do any other fans besides Saints fans, um, like do even Patriots fans talk about that shit as much as Saints fans? Probably so. It no, was part not. of no, no, no. It was part of an end zone celebration on Sunday Night Football when the Falcons played the Patriots. Oh, really? You didn't see that? Yes. I did, I forgot about that. And when the Patriots are still worried about you. Something really shitty happened to you. I know for a fact the Saints went out there with the band and had the band on the field, like doing making twenty eight to three with a band in the middle of the field. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! So that is our top ten list of twenty seventeen. I mean, I'm happy. Like, <laughs> we went a little bit over. I did actually prepare a little nut nice to say for y'all, so I'm a, I'm gonna drop that real quick. That I'm gonna let um CNH and Raj give they they woohoo's and wahas. They out there in um, Denver, Colorado, so I know they're about to go hit the town tonight. So I want to let them get out there and do their thing. Um, so hit that music for nothing nice. You to know say. they say if you can't say anything it's nice, don't say anything nice at all. Say. If you can't say something nice, yeah, don't say nothing at all. Nothing nice, nice to say, but I don't. All right, I got I got an interesting theory, man. If your mama buys you Jordans, she gonna love you. I was in church for Christmas earlier this week, and I noticed boo cool little dudes with J's on. <laughs> now I know the Lord says come as you are, but come on, my nigga, it's Jesus' birthday. You could dress up a little bit, you know, a sweater vest, a little clip on bow tie or something. But shit, shit, I digress. The little brothers with Jordans on. If I had to guess, well, anywhere between a size little boy and young man, somewhere around there. But none of them were bigger than a size 10. reason I bring that up is because these little jokers' feet is still growing. They're not even going to be able to fit them shoes in 10 to 16 months. <laughs> now, let me stop and say, I'm not judging the act of buying Jordans. Whether Michael Jordan is the GOAT or not, that's debatable. But there's no debating that Jays are the best shoes ever created in tennis shoe history. I have a plethora of Jays, but check this out. I bought them for myself. When my feet stopped growing. My mama never did no crazy stuff like that. Matter of fact, she had a rule. My mama made it a point to always give me all that I wanted. Some of what... No, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. All that I needed. Some of what I wanted. And none of that bullshit that's frivolous. Boys still shooting each other over Jays. It happened last week in D.C. And you spending $220 on sneakers to give your son. Who gonna grow out of in no time or better yet. Hit the playground and scuff them all to hell. Let me give you some parenting advice. I got plenty of things you could get with $220 instead of buying J's. And you might end up being parent of the year. You ready? I did the math. You could spend $10 on washing detergent. Wash your son's jeans. They stink. I'm pretty sure of it. Pack of deodorant. Some Axe body spray. Two tutoring sessions a piece. $30 a piece, I guess. I'll do them. You name the subject. I'll get them right. A couple pairs of joggers and tees from H&M or Cotton On. A driver's ed course. A $70 gift card to the Nike outlet. I'm absolutely sure he'll find some kicks he likes. And that they won't even be some, and they might even be some joints. And $50 for whatever kind of lessons he wants to take him 
that might get him to college for free. Swimming lessons, basketball, trumpet, karate, acting, whatever. Now your son going to be fresh, smart, clean, and you're going to end up pocketing about $50 at the end of the deal. You see? I done made you a better parent in about two minutes. But knowing you, if you bought them Jordans, you probably did some dumb shit like copy some Louboutins and forgot to pay the renter's insurance on your one-bedroom apartment. But hey, they say, if I don't have nothing nice to say, I shouldn't say nothing at all. Raj, Chase, I mean, c and <laughs> Hey, man, I had fun today, man. This shit was cool. We are, we are. Of course, I had fun. Man, good to be here. I'll be back. I'll be back. So y'all can say y'all um y'all condolences while we hit this music and y'all get out there and do y'all damn thing tonight. I'm a, uh I'm just gonna sit in the house and Bible study. Right, right, right. Uh, that's not what I understand to be true, but um, <laughs> if I understand who you are to be you. Uh, you know. So now, now we're gonna go out here. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna go celebrate the new year early. You know, we're gonna end this year off right. Um, yeah. I'll holler at y'all later. All right, homies.